Hey, hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day as always. Likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated as they help out the channel. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed, because there's always a bajillion things happening in this space and it's impossible to do it during the course of the week, so alas, here we are on the weekend together. Hello, and without further ado, let's jump right into it, the price of ADA. The native token of Cardano is up by 13% over the past day, hitting a 12-week high of $2.03. According to data from CoinGecko, the asset has gained 44% in value in the last week. That is insane, which makes it the biggest gainer amongst the market's leading cryptocurrencies. And there's a little pretty chart right there. The latest upward movement pushed the token's market cap to $64 billion or 3.2% of the value of every single crypto. This resulted in ADA overtaking Tether as the third largest cryptocurrency and going ahead of Binance Coin. Cardano is on a roll, and I don't know what's really going to stop it anytime soon. If this is just the hype from the date of the activation, by the time we get the actual activation and the one can only assume tens, 50s, hundreds of apps that are going to be built on top of this thing. I'm expecting very big, crazy price movements. Uh, I think a lot of people, depending on where you look on the internet, a lot of people are expecting an easy $5 Cardano by the time we get to around autumn. Sounds about right. Uh, we will most certainly see how this continues to develop as time ends up going on. A lot of people are very excited. Cardano is one of the very few coins uh, that deem themselves an Ethereum conqueror and they believed in some way that they could overtake or bypass Ethereum. I think if Cardano ever does manage to overtake or pass by Ethereum, I, I, I think, I don't even know what I think. I can't even think of like an actual metaphor or a phrase to say. I think the crypto market will completely turn onto its head and we see an even stronger push higher for Cardano's price. But... At the moment, yeah, at least at the time of me making this video, it is coin number three. People are going completely insane over that. Is this the first time that it's ever become coin number three? I know that Binance coin was number three at one point, and then Tether flipped it when the entire market was down in May because of Bitcoin. And alas, yeah, here we are. So I'm expecting very big things, and I assume by the end of the year, we should have a very accurate uh, account of exactly how big Cardano is going to be. Eh, without further ado... Let's move on. Next up, in unsurprising news, crypto exchange Coinbase said on Tuesday it's going to be working with PNC Bank, the fifth largest commercial bank in the United States by assets, on a cryptocurrency project. Mm -hmm. They said in recent months we have formed partnerships with industry leaders including Tesla, PNC Bank, SpaceX, Tesla again, Oh, that was Elon Musk was the first one. Uh, third point, LLC and Wisdom Tree Investments, a letter from PNC to its hair, hair holders. shareholders read, when asked about the partnership with Coindesk or Coinbase, Coinbase declined to elaborate. Okay, a source had previously told Coindesk that PNC Bank is expected to unveil a crypto John in the coming quarters. No, I, Can you tell me what a John is? And I'm pretty sure somebody knows. It, it, it's always like, so first of all, stop it. One, Rewinding it. No one uses the word John on a daily basis. And I know there's going to be somebody who's like, wait, no, I, I definitely use John every single day. If you can tell me what a John is, I'll give you a digital cookie. I don't have any digital cookies. It's going to be metaphoric in nature. The service would give the Pittsburgh-based National Bank more seamless access to cryptocurrency investments. For its customers, the sources said it's just one facet of PNC's broader digital asset and blockchain strategy. So now the fifth largest commercial bank in the United States has openly announced that they're getting into the cryptocurrency space and they're doing it with Coinbase. I think we have the oldest bank, the second oldest bank, and let's all be completely honest with ourselves. JP Morgan, I believe, is the largest bank in the United States and they are most certainly into the cryptocurrency space, regardless of what Jamie Dimon says, uh, because we know that they're also offering exposure, wink, wink, to Bitcoin and Ethereum to their wealthiest clients. So the ball keeps rolling. It continues to go on. Um, every single bank on the planet, I assume in some sort of way or facet, is 
in the cryptocurrency space, I guess, is this when we have like actual confirmation that they're there, that people kind of completely go insane and go, oh my gosh, you can't believe another bank is in it. But once again, they're buying up all the Bitcoin. They're doing it over the counter. They're making sure that it doesn't happen or uh, get triggered on cryptocurrency exchanges so they can continue filling their bags with all that digital money. Anyway, that's the PNC Bank Coinbase news. And let's move on. Next up, the Lightning Network, a layer two protocol for scaling the Bitcoin network with fast, cheap, and private transactions, now holds over 2,200 Bitcoin in its channels. The scaling solution was proposed in two, wow, it's been that long, geez, Louise, since 2015 by Joseph Poon and Thaddeus Dreija, has more than doubled in capacity in one year, currently with over 65,000 open channels. For those of you who do not know that the way that the Lightning Network works, it's quite simple. It's a little weird, but it's quite simple. It's basically, imagine another layer around Bitcoin. Cool, got it. What happens is, is that, let's say you have 0 0.10 Bitcoins. You have a tenth of a Bitcoin. You put it into the Lightning Network and basically uh, make your own channel with that tenth of a Bitcoin. So any transactions that are a tenth of a Bitcoin or lower can go through your channel extremely quick, yada, yada, yada. You basically have to hold Bitcoin in the Lightning Network to be able to uh, have things going through it. The way that this works is it's another way of people for people to be able to make passive income. When you open up a channel, everyone who goes through your channel, you set your fee. It's usually one Satoshi, extremely inexpensive. And basically, if you have 35,000 people using your network or channel every single day, you basically make 35,000 Satoshis. The idea being in the future, should we, if we potentially ever get to a one-to-one -one parity, $1 to one Satoshi. If we ever do, there will not be a US dollar, but you understand what I'm kind of saying. Basically, you're making $35,000 per day, and this is why we see this huge push towards people opening up these Lightning Network channels, because I do believe that there is, at the moment, a maximum capacity to exactly how many channels can be opened on this. So the, the really interesting part is that you can even see this chart right here. It says, Lightning has been demonstrating stark growth this year. The network's capacity has seen a 46% increase in the last two months alone. It was In June alone, it was housing 1,500 Bitcoin. It's fairly obvious who's taking part in this. It's all the institutions. I spoke about this before. Uh, a lot of the institutions have announced very recently that they're going to allow people, you can buy uh, Quiznos with Bitcoin. You can do this with Bitcoin. And there's Nordstrom and there's Subway and there's this place. And it keeps going on and on and on. But you cannot do that with current Bitcoin network fees. It's just completely impossible. Uh, so this is why the Lightning Network exists. And I assume by the end of this year, well, this will be even higher. Because if you want to start accepting Bitcoin, you got to pretty much do this once again. Oh, AMC Theaters is also accepting Bitcoin as well. Uh, and you can't accept... If the, if, the, if, if the traffic ticket... If the... Movie ticket is 11 or $12, and the network fee for Bitcoin is $25. It's not really going to work out. So this is where Lightning kind of comes in. And at some point, Lightning Network interacts with the main network and tells it that all these transactions have taken place. You pay the $25 that you normally would, but you get about 35,000 transactions, something or other, that go to the main net. So yeah, cool. This is the wave of the future. I assume in five years, this will not even be a discussion anymore. We'll simply be using Lightning for everything because, you know... Gotta use that Bitcoin. Anyway, that's the Lightning Network news. And let's move on. Next up, the Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company has doubled down on its Bitcoin endeavors through a partnership with New York Digital Investment Group or New York DIG. Both partners or parties aim to enable certain clients of the insurance behemoth to receive Bitcoin exposure. So once again, usually rich people, unless I'm mistaken. According to the announcement dated the 11th of August, the insurance broker founded a decade and a half ago has entered into a placement agreement with New York Dig through its broker deal MML Investor Services or MLMLIS, that is MMLIS, Mass Mutual will be will offer qualified customers, rich people, access to a Bitcoin fund, providing an alternative way and efficient way to invest in the primary cryptocurrency. So the news basically is another mega industry corporation, money, 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 dollar, dollar bills, y'all, is in the cryptocurrency space. 
Should you be surprised? No, because they're all in the cryptocurrency space. A lot of the times it comes down to the fact that in a lot of the news that we actually end up getting, if you've been paying attention over the last two to three years, uh, usually has to do with partnerships that have to usually go through the SEC and they have to file this paperwork. I was going to say usually again, but it seemed like a bit too much. Have to go through the paperwork and then you... <laughs> Almost did it again. And that's when they actually have to declare that all these things are happening. So Mass Mutual is going to be offering uh, Bitcoin to its wealthiest clients through New York Dig. We hear about New York Dig maybe once a week, give or take, somewhere around there. Nothing too surprising, except for the fact that all the rich people are buying up all the Bitcoin. Can't stress that enough. Here's the press release for it right here. It says MML Investor Services enters into an agreement with New York Dig to provide financial services or financial professionals and investors access to a Bitcoin fund. Fantastic. Anyway, that's that news. Let's move on. So here's the news that we were talking about two days ago with all the 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 circle dramatic stuff that was happening in the news. The cryptocurrency fintech services company Circle, part of the Center Consortium, the issuer of the USDC or the US dollar coin has revealed in a blog yesterday that it intends to become a full reserve national commercial bank. The announcement was made by its CEO, Jeremy Allaire, in a post where he explained the journey the company would have to undergo to reach that goal. Allaire stated that since its inception, Circle has intended to become a financial institution. Remember the news that we had about a day or two ago where people were like, uh, people were upset, air quotes, uh, that the circle dollar was not fully backed one-to-one -one by the U.S. dollar. Uh, so the news is, in the same way that it is for every other uh, stable coin, they're usually partially backed by the U.S. dollar. There may be some euros thrown inside there, and maybe other securities or commodities, whatever equals or adds up to the entirety of the amount of stable coins that they have on the market. That's why I told you it was non-news, because every single stable coin does the exact same thing. But... Uh, Circle is trying to become a bank, like an actual bank bank. Uh, and what happens is, is that people realize that they don't have to use a normal bank anymore. They can use Circle instead. Because why? Because banks are only able to offer people 0.02% on their interest accounts, on the money inside of their actual account, or have negative interest rates. <laughs> so what happens when uh, Circle Coinbase slash Coinbase uh, becomes a bank? Well, they can offer you 6% on your money, 7%. They also have their own version of the US dollar, which they can, I don't know what their actual current interest rates are, but they're definitely higher than 0.02%. So this is why I think, wink, we saw that news about uh, people, people, air quotes, being upset that Circle was not, uh, Circle dollar was not fully backed by the US dollar. It's absolute nonsense. And for those of you who also don't know as well, this is from 2018. That was like 95 years ago. It says Coinbase Custody receives a trust charter from the New York Department of Financial Services. Why am I showing you this? Just to let you know, because a lot of you probably have no idea. Coinbase is already a bank. Uh, nearly all the major cryptocurrency exchanges, I believe, except for Binance, don't know explicitly, uh, they all have some type of a, a banking charter or a banking trust that basically makes them into a de facto bank. Uh, so, you know, like a lot of people keep, how do I say this in a, in a, in a very nice way? We don't need banks anymore because we already have like kind of banks 2.0 and they're basically cryptocurrency exchanges. But Circle also being a part of Coinbase trying to become another type of bank just kind of makes normal banks even more ridiculous, I think you can kind of say. So I give it to the end of the year, maybe even a bit longer. We know the SEC takes a lifetime to get any type of paperwork done. But this is going to happen. Uh, so good for them. And I'm I'm not excited for it, but... I mean, I know a lot of people who keep their money in the bank, and if they, and I if, if I can in any way send them in this direction so that they're at least getting six percent per year on their money, as opposed to losing it, you know, that would also be nice. Anyway, that's the circle news that we missed when we were talking about the other circle USD coin being fully backed and whatnot. And let's move on. Wait, oh yeah, sorry, right, right here. Yeah, here's the other portion of it. Creator of the <laughs> Creaty. Creator of world's second largest stablecoin is pursuing a US commercial banking license. 
Ta-da! Let's move on. Next up. The digital pay-per-mile auto insurance firm MetroMile has purchased $1 million worth of BTC back in June. In May, the company announced it would soon implement a Bitcoin payment solution on its platform for eligible insurance claims and that it would purchase additional Bitcoin as well. This development would make MetroMile the first insurance company to both accept premiums and pay claims in Bitcoin as well. While the firm announced it would purchase an additional $10 million of Bitcoin in quarter two to facilitate making insurance payments in Bitcoin, there has been no public indication that they have done so yet. MetroMile CEO Dan Preston said, MetroMile gives drivers control over how they want to pay for insurance. We started by giving drivers an opportunity to save 47% a year by paying per mile. Fantastic. And now we offer people the flexibility to pay and be paid how they want as well. Phantasmagorical. So the news is um, an insurance company has purchased $1 million worth of Bitcoin. They plan on purchasing another $10 million. I assume that the only reason why we know that they purchased the initial $10 million was because it normally always has to go through the SECA. ABC as well. Uh, what was the other point? They're not the first insurance company to actually do this. But we, we, you know, I've, I've had days where I was, I think, the only one excited by this news. Uh, where a lot of uh, life insurance companies and retirement companies and stuff like that, and retirement funds, were also purchasing Bitcoin as well as part of their portfolio uh, to be able to allow people uh, when they retire to have exposure to Bitcoin. Yabba dabba 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 da. So very cool. Here's the actual um, US SEC filing for Metro Mile. It is 103 pages. There's no way I'm going to scroll through all of this. It's more so to kind of let you see what's going on. They got some numbers and some monies and some other stuff. A lot of numbers. And then some other stuff. And then that happened. Are there any words anywhere? No. Oh, words, 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 words. Anyway. That's the uh, Metro Mile news. And once again, there are a lot of companies who are just simply buying Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies without having to file through the SEC at all. So always keep that in mind um, when you're trying to remember that there's not a lot of Bitcoin left. Anyway, that's the Metro Mile news. And let's move on. And to finish things off, on-chain market analysis firm Glassnode says an increasing number of million dollar Bitcoin transactions is a sign of growing institutional involvement. Glassnode indicated that since September of last year, the number of Bitcoin transactions worth over $1 million has shot up from nearly one third to two thirds of the total value of Bitcoin being transferred. Small size transactions fell from more than two thirds to roughly a third of the total value transferred according to Glassnode. Uh, it's actually also part of the end of the video as well. Uh, usually you'll see it on my weekend videos where I show you like the transactions that are happening through the Bitcoin network. They're monstrous. It's really insane how much money is actually flowing through the network at any given time. Uh, and also in a, you know, decentralized manner, you know, we don't really need banks because the network is kind of doing it for us. But uh, yeah, it's really weird because you see all this money kind of moving back and forth and you can't really see where it's going, but it kind of makes you wonder... Uh, who's buying up all these uh, Bitcoin at one time? Because sometimes you'll see like a a movement of like $14,000 worth of Bitcoin, which is also a huge amount of money. But then like right behind it, there's like a $4 million transaction. And it's just a little insane to see. Uh, this is kind of, for those of you who don't know, you will know a bit further in the future. Uh, the idea is for the for next 5, 10, 1,000 years, is to basically um, use the core, so Bitcoin's main chain, the actual blockchain, uh, for larger transactions because you may pay a $25, $30 fee to actually send the transactions back and forth. However, uh, it is the most secure way on the planet to actually send money. You don't have to go through the bank and you know that it's going to get there because of the integrity of the blockchain. And it's meant for, the Lightning Network is meant for smaller transactions so that in the future we can actually buy a cup of coffee or a stick of gum or whatever people like to say for using the Lightning Network for. Yeah, I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. 
Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.